This video is going to be covering chapter 15, section 1, which deals with aqueous solutions and pH. And we'll start off with a quick review uh, by saying that acids, if you recall, increase the hydronium concentration of a solution, while bases uh, increase the hydroxide concentration of a certain solution. However, water, when left to its own devices, will transfer protons back and forth from one to another to create positive hydronium and negative hydroxide in a process called self-ionization. Now because of this process of self-ionization, there are natural concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide in water. In other words, there isn't just a non-zero value for how much hydronium or hydroxide there is. And so that's represented with uh, these brackets. These brackets show basically the molarity of something. And what this statement here is saying is that if you multiply the concentration of hydronium, the molarity, by the concentration of hydroxide, you'll get this K value. And this K value is what is known as the ionization constant of water. And for all temperatures of water across solutions, etc. cetera, uh, basically the hydronium and hydroxide product will always equal some known constant. For instance, at 25 degrees Celsius and for all values near room temperature, the ionization constant is approximately 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Now because these two have to multiply to equal the ionization constant of water. There's basically only three relationships that can exist between these two numbers. Either they can be equal, in which case the solution is called neutral. They can be, you can have more hydronium than hydroxide, in which case it's acidic, because as we know, acids will increase the concentration of hydronium, or it can be uh, basic, in which case the hydroxide has a higher concentration due to the addition of a base. So now we're going to be going over how to calculate the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide in solution. So if you'll recall, strong acids and bases, which are mainly what are we going what we're going to be doing these examples with, uh, completely dissociate in water. So if you have one mole of sodium hydroxide, it completely dissociates into one mole of sodium and one mole of hydroxide ions. Now, as an example to calculate the hydroxide and hydronium content, let's take uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 2 molar solution of NaOH and see basically how many, or the concentration of hydroxide ions when it gets dissolved in water. So you start off with your 10 to the minus 2 moles per liter by the definition of molarity. And then because it completely dissociates, you have this 1 to 1 ratio of sodium hydroxide to hydroxide ions. We have 1 mole of hydroxide for every 1 mole of sodium hydroxide. These cancel out, and you end up with 1 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of hydroxide ions per liter, or 1 times 10 to the negative 2 molar solution of hydroxide ions. Now using what we know about the molarity of hydronium and hydroxide ions, that is, that their product must always equal the ionization constant of water, we can then use the molarity of the hydroxide to solve for the molarity of the hydronium using this equation here. From this point, basically, it's just a plug and chug sort of deal. You have your hydronium concentration, you move this hydroxide down below into the denominator, and because we know the ionization constant of water at room temperature is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, and we solved for our molarity content of hydroxide, that is 1 times 10 to the negative 2, we basically get that the concentration of hydronium is 1 times 10 to the negative 12. 
And just as we use the molar concentration of hydroxide to solve for hydronium over here, the reverse is true as well. We could start with a calculation for hydronium and then use the ionization constant of water to solve for the concentration of hydroxide. Now because these concentrations are really small, you know, 10 to the minus 12 was the example of the concentration of hydroxide from the last problem. Um, chemists developed a scale that uses, I mean, more reasonable numbers, and they called it the pH scale. And the pH scale is defined as the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. And for those of you not yet in Algebra 2, a log without any number down here is a log base 10. That's just the common logarithm. So, for example, if we were to take neutral water, which has a hydronium content of 10 to the negative 7, we'd set the pH equal to the negative log of 10 to the negative 7, and this becomes negative of negative 7 because this exponent moves down in front according to the properties of logarithms, and you get a pH of 7 for neutral water. And just as there's the pH scale for concentration of hydronium ions, chemists didn't want to be biased, so they created the pOH scale, which is defined very similarly as the negative of the log of the concentration of hydroxide ions rather than hydronium ions. So if you take the hydroxide content of neutral water, which is unsurprisingly 10 to the negative 7, just as it was with hydronium, then you get a pOH of negative log of 10 to the negative 7. The 7 comes down once again, you get negative, negative 7, or 7. And you'll see that the pH and pOH will always sum to 14. So when you add the two together, you get 14. In the case of neutral water, they're split directly in half into 7 and 7. Now what's the point of this pH scale if you don't understand what the numbers, usually 0 through 14, uh, represent? So as an example, let's take a solution that has 1 times 10 to the negative 6 molar concentration of hydronium. Yeah, and you'll notice this concentration of hydronium is almost 10 times neutral water because neutral water has 10 to the negative 7 concentration of hydronium. And if you take the negative log of this 10 to the 6, 10 to the negative 6 rather, you get negative negative 6, or the pH of this high concentration of hydronium is 6. So when a pH is less than 7, as in this acidic example, then the solution itself is acidic. Likewise, if the pH is greater than 7, then the solution is basic. And the reverse is true for pOH. So if you have pOH, I'll just throw an O in there, of less than 7, then it's basic. And a pOH of greater than 7 then it's acidic. However, we use the pH as a standard, not the pOH. So just remember that less than 7 is acidic and greater than 7 is basic. So far we've had pretty easy calculations where the concentration of you know hydronium has been 1 times 10 to the something. But the problem with this is that most concentrations are not going to be in this format. More likely, you're going to have some generic number times 10 to, you know, negative 7 or whatever. And so the vast majority of the time to calculate the pH, you're going to have to use a calculator. And you do that just by, instead of taking just this number at the top as your pH, you just plug this whole number in to the logarithm expression, expression and you'll get a pH value that's much more precise. Now, if we're given the pH of a solution, as we often are from, you know, litmus paper and other chemical indicators, 
we can solve for the concentration of hydronium and using water's ionization constant, the concentration of hydroxide as well. And this is just basic algebra. So because pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydronium, if we're given the pH, all I have to do is solve for the concentration of hydronium. So you make this negative and you end up with just the log of concentration of hydronium. And from there, to solve from this, all you have to do is do the opposite of a log. So you end up with 10 to the negative pH equals the concentration of hydronium. Now as a brief summary note, it should be noted that these calculations mostly only work with strong acids and bases because they completely dissolve in solution. If you were to have a weak acid or base such as acetic acid or ammonia, then you would have to measure the pH experimentally. In other words, you couldn't just calculate it based on the concentration of ions within the molecule in solution.